Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create and use textured backgrounds with Divi's design options. So what we'll be doing is we'll be using a combination of Photoshop and Divi to create awesome looking background sections. Okay, so without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let me show you how to create this. So for today's tutorial, we're going to do our work first in Photoshop and then we're going to move over to Divi. So let's start off by creating a brand new document of uh, dimensions of 1920 by 847. So I'm going to come over here into Photoshop and I am going to click on File, New. And I'm going to customize my size here by adding 1920 by 847 like that and then making sure that artboard is not selected. Go ahead now and click on create. Okay, so let's start off by uh, clicking here to add our, our color. So I'm gonna paste my hexadecimal value like that. Click okay. And then I'm gonna come over here and click the bucket tool. So I'm gonna cl uh, click and press down and select my bucket tool. And then I'm just gonna press it once and then that now applies my color to my background. Next, we need to add a brand new layer. So I'm gonna come over here to the bottom, click this layer icon to create a new layer. And then while that layer is selected, I'm gonna come over here to my polygonal lasso tool and create a shape. So I'm gonna start off by making a point here and then creating my shape like this. Okay, so now there's my selection for my shape. So next I need to change my color and fill in this space which is highlighted. So I'm gonna come over here, click on my palette, enter my color, click OK, and then I'm gonna press my bucket tool and apply it to this layer. So I'm gonna click again one more time here on my bucket tool, add my color, and then we're gonna add one more layer above this layer one. So I'm gonna click here to add my new layer so um, one more time, I'm going to create my shape again. So I'm going to click on my, my polygonal lasso tool and then just do my shape one more time while layer two is selected like that. And then just make sure you complete this shape in order for this to apply like that. As we did before, I need to, sele I need to fill this part of my shape with a new color. So again, I'm going to click on my palette here and paste my color, click OK, and then I want to come over here to my bucket tool and click once in this highlighted shape. So now we can see we have a shape in that area now. So next we need to use the eraser tool. So I'm going to come over here, click on my eraser tool, and then on the top here I'm going to click on my settings for my brush. So I'm going to reduce this to about 300 and let's say 338. And then here, you need to make sure your hardness is set to zero. Right, so what you need to do now is to paint over the part of the layer that you want to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting here. So you can see I'm getting rid of the area that um, I don't need anymore on this layer. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate these layers because we want this design to be on the other side. But this time it's going to be easy because all we have to do is to select these two layers. So to select the two layers, we need to hold down the shift key like that. And then these two layers are now selected. And then to duplicate these two layers, all you have to do is to hit command J. Uh, that's on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it's control J. So while these two layers are selected, the next thing we're going to do is to rotate them. So I'm going to come over here to edit and then I'm going to come over here to transform. Click on rotate. In fact, we need to come over here to rotate 180 degrees like that. And then all I have to do now is to drag it all the way to the end. OK, so once that's done, what we need to do now is to save for web. So we need to come over here to file export and then click on save for web and then here we need to make sure that the file is saved as a jpeg or a png but i prefer using jpeg so i'm going to go ahead now and save so i'm going to save this on my documents folder click on save 
So this technique that I've shown you can be used even with brushes. So let's give that a go. So here I'm going to add a brand new layer. And then I'm going to add a background color to that brush I'm going to use. So I'm going to come over here, click on my palette. And then I'm going to paste my color that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to click on OK. Come over here to my brushes. And then you can go in and choose the type of brush that you want to use. OK, so I'm going to select this brush right here. And then I'm going to increase my size uh, to about, say, 500. Now, it doesn't matter what uh, size your brush is. It's just a matter of what works for you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw some styles onto this like that. Add a new layer and add a dark color. So the idea here is to just add a darker color so we can have like a wave sort of design going on like that. And this doesn't have to be very precise. OK, we're going to do this one more time. Make it darker. So I'm going to select a, an even darker color, click OK. So right now, all I'm doing is just clicking here just to create uh, something quite stylish. OK, so once you're happy with that, all you have to do now is to go ahead and save for web as we did before. So I'm going to come over here to file and I'm going to come here to export and then click on save for web. And as we did before, make sure it's JPEG and click on save. So every time you need to create uh, custom backgrounds for your website, you can go ahead and try different ways you could do this. So in this example, as you can see, we used shapes and then we used brushes. But you can use an experiment with uh, anything that you think works for your design. Now it's time to head over to Divi and add our backgrounds that we've just created in Photoshop. Now the layout page I'll be using is from our free giveaway which is here on this link. In fact, what I'll do is I'll link it in the show notes below. So if you want to download it and use it, you can go ahead and do that. This is our learning management um, free layout that we gave away. So this is pretty much how it looks like. OK, so now uh, over here in my Divi install, I've created a brand new page. I've just called this brushes. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into the visual builder. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this background with the one that we've just created. So I'm going to come over here and click on this gear icon for our section settings like that. Click on background. Now, this time we need a gradient uh, background. So we're going to come over here and adjust all our colors for our gradients. So let's start off with our first color. So I'm going to replace the colors that I have here with my first color. So I'm going to paste it in here, add my second color. Again, I'm going to paste my color in here and then for the uh, gradient type we're going to change this from linear to radial like that so for the start position let's set this to about 41 and finish is fine at 100 percent now it's time to upload our background image so i'm going to come over here to my third tab i'm going to delete the image that we have already here now let's add the image that we created in photoshop so here i'm going to come over to upload files Click on select files. And then I, if I recall, I saved this on my documents. But in your case, you can just navigate to the folder where you do where you saved your images. So I'm going to click on Divi background like that. Click open. And then I'm going to click upload an image. So now we can see that our image is now in the background. Next, we need to make sure that our background image is set to cover because this enables this to now cover the whole section, which is good. And then here for the background image position, it needs to be set to center because you don't want uh, this shape that we've created to be um, out of frame. And then finally here on the background uh, image repeat, make sure it's set to no repeat. And then the background image blend needs to be set to overlay. So we've just created a brand new design to our background. So all I have to do now is to click on save and that's our background. OK, so now let's add our second image that we created in Photoshop and see what style comes out with this. OK, so I'm going to go back here to my section settings, 
click on background and we're going to start off with our gradient. So I'm going to click here on my second tab, click this plus button. And now we're going to add our first color. So I'm going to click my first color and paste my hexadecimal value like that add my second color and then next we need to make sure that our gradient type this time is set to linear and here for the direction we're going to set this to 270 so i'm just going to drag this all the way until i get to about 270 like that our start position let's set this to 70 and our end position is fine at 100. now it's time to add our image so I'm going to click this third tab to uh, add our image. Click the plus button. Now my image is already now in my media library. So all I have to do now is to select it. And this is the image that we created in Photoshop. So now I'm going to click upload an image. So now we can see that all our brushes are now showing. And then just making sure that your background image size is set to cover. And it's also set to center. This makes sure that all your design is in view. So finally, we need to use the image blend to make our color blend with our background image. So I'm going to come over here and select my image blend. So I'm going to go for overlay. So as you can see, we have a beautiful blend of our linear gradient and the image that we've just created in Photoshop. So go ahead and create some patterns in Photoshop and then bring them in and stylize your sections and make them look unique. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new videos similar to what you're seeing today. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.